50. I'm supposed to windle down every airsoft replica I've ever wanted into just 50 slots. If you're a big fat nerd for history, movies, video games are for some of the most epic YouTube channels there is on this website like me, then compiling a list of 50 replicas you wish you had in your collection isn't easy. You can probably get up to 20 out of 50, but then you have to play it smart to make sure that you don't skip something important like I did the first couple times I wrote up my blacklist. I even had to hold myself back from getting a chalkboard because I wanted to recreate some Gone in 60 Seconds moments. I just stole 50 airsoft guns for you in one night. All right, I'm a little tired, I'm a little wired, and I think I deserve a little appreciation. Thank you, thank you. But without further ado, I have a list to get through. So after a lot of Google searches, compilation watching, and book skimming, I present to you my list of 50 airsoft replicas I want. This isn't supposed to be a list of demands or stuff that I think I should be gifted. I simply wanted to make a list to get people talking. I know people will start writing their own lists in the comments, and if I'm going to demand anything in this video, then let it be a comment from you over what are some replicas that you wish you owned. Also, if I can be greedy for a moment, then I would like to ask for you to subscribe now if you're new to my channel, as I'm trying to break 400,000 subscribers. You can follow me on Instagram too, which would be very nice. However, let's get into my first five replicas. I don't have any kind of structure for this list, so let's just run down it, starting with a couple of classic airsoft replicas that I haven't even seen before. Number one and number two, Tanaka M1897 Trench Gun and Marushin Auto Mag. Now I've been playing for almost nine years now, and I've been all over the United States to play, film, and just to be around the airsoft community, and yet I've never seen any M1897s or any auto mags. They might go up for sale now and then for anywhere from 500 to $1,000 for mint condition examples, and the old Japanese Marushin auto mags were made from plastic, so good luck finding one that doesn't need some kind of work. I probably wouldn't play with either of these due to their age or because anything shell ejecting is pretty much an instant no for me, but as collector's pieces that I would mess around with at home, I'd be interested in making a deal. An easier to find shell ejecting shoddy I definitely want in my collection would be Number 3, Marushin M1887. People immediately hear that and think I want the Terminator 2 styled short barreled sawn off version, but no, I actually want the full barrel model with the full stock. There's not much really to say here, I just think it looks beautiful in this configuration. Now even though I've heard from owners of the real Winchesters or even of some of the knockoffs that they're not very good, I'd still want one of those too if I can bring myself to dropping that kind of money. I've seen the shorter barreled ones that everyone thinks about here in America, but never the full lengths. I probably have to look overseas if I get around to ordering one. But something I have seen at least twice though would be my fourth pick, but both were in disrepair despite looking good on the outside. Number 4, Inakasu M60 E3. Yeah, yeah, it's not the more iconic version everyone else cares about, but for whatever reason, this is my favorite of all the M60s. I have no idea how well built they are or how the internals are like. I just know that $2,000 was considered a price drop back in 2011, but prices calmed down to $900 to $1,400 from what I've seen, which is still kind of insane. I know that Inokatsu is considered legendary tier to a lot of older airsofters, but I'm totally ignorant as to what warrants prices like that. At least LCT made their own M60 a couple years ago for $1,700. Can you believe they all sold out in like a month? A few became Daytona blowbacks, so that's amazing to know. LCT even made a tripod mount for about $800. LCT makes solid stuff, there's no arguing about that. 
you can break VFCs apart with an LCT. Put an LCT G3 next to a Classic Army G3 and the Classic Army would just turn into ash. If you can find one, then I'd say the LCT M60 is probably the most solid M60 that you can get, if you can find one that is. Oh, and when I wrote up the original list for this video, I put haha good luck next to the LCT M60. Oh, and the LCT M60 is my fifth pick for this video, if you didn't know. Let's just pile on the LCTs because I just like what they have to offer. Number 6. LCT SG-1 You know, to go along with my baseline G3. LCT isn't known for doing anything super impressive when it comes to their internals, but their G3s are crazy at range with heavy BBs. So I don't need to do much to an SG-1 if I wanted to put together a DMR build, along with an LCT PSG-1 if LCT would be as so kind as to release one already. Number 7. LCT SVD I think these go for like a thousand dollars a pop, but it's a freaking LCT SVD. People are comparing these to old real sword SVDs, and if you don't know what that's supposed to mean, it basically means people are trying to see if LCT beat out the most respected Dragon Off that's ever been made for Airsoft. I'm sure the range on these is beautiful, but again, I've never even seen one in person. Number 8 and number 9, LCT RPK-16 and RPD. I love support platforms. I already own a PKM and an LCT RPK, and I love both of them, so you know I have to have an RPK-16 to bridge the gap between my LCT AK-12 and my beautiful RPK. But LCT also made the only RPD that we have in the airsoft world. So throw that on the list as my ninth pick. This list is going to make for a really long video if you couldn't tell, but it's already filled with some of the most gorgeous classic airsoft replicas along with some unique stuff that you probably haven't even heard of. The RPD and the RPK-16 are some of the easier to acquire replicas on this list, despite their $400 to $1,000 price tags, and luckily their drum mags are said to be some of the most reliable. I can confirm that about the RPK drums that I have for my RPK, but I don't know about the RPD's magazine. I don't trust M249 tube feed style mags very much, so I have no idea if the RPD's drum is a stuttering mess with a weak motor. But it's still a freaking RPD, so it's gorgeous. Number 10. Northeast Uzi. I really like SMGs. I don't have many of them in my collection, so next year I'm going to try to fix that starting with a Northeast Uzi. I've been saying for years that we needed a new Uzi and Northeast delivered right after they wowed us with their full still stents. Now they could have just made another AEG Uzi and left it at that, but Northeast risked their newly conceived reputation and gave us what we all wanted, a gas blowback Uzi. Northeast has a whole lot of more Uzis planned, so I'm definitely one of their biggest fans right now. To go along with my future plan Northeast Uzi, I'm going to need something smaller to itch that Grand Theft Auto 3 craving. That's why I added the Maruzen Micro Uzi at Number 11. Maruzen Micro Uzi. These sell for like $100 all the time, so this is just one of those cases of I've just been too lazy to get one. But if Northeast actually releases their own version, then I'll just replace the Maruzen version with that one. Basically, just put anything that you see in this video right now on my list. Their full steel, their gas blowback, and Northeast seems to have a good reputation of hearing players out to adjust and improve their products. And I will always respect that. Number 12, WE Tech. MP5A4. Never buy Weed Tech. Yeah, whatever. I added to WE Tech. You're gonna have to put up with it. These have always been really cool to me. WE can be a bit of a hit and miss with a lot of enthusiasts out there. Trust me, I know. I grew up watching What Are You Buying? And I had one of their M14s explode in my face before I made the US Airsoft channel, but hear me out. A gas pullback MP5 
is pretty awesome, right? I've shot a lot of these already, and it's time that I get one for myself, along with some wood furniture to really confuse people. I'm just debating if I should get an MP5K or a full-sized model. Number 13. WETEC M14. I really missed out by not adding that at number 14. But didn't you just say that you had one of these explode in your face? Yes, but things have changed in the course of nine years, and RA Tech parts are still easily available. I just like oddball gas blowbacks. And it's an M14, so I like that. The stock might not be made from real wood, but that can be swapped out. But if a second WE M14 explodes on me, then I'll just throw out all of my other WE Techs if that makes you happy. It's cheap, it has problems, it's clingy. There's fucking no replacement parts for it. Just get a KW. Just like, just get the extra 100 and get a KW. Like, that's what I recommend. But there's another WE on this list, and that's the number 14 WE Tech. L85. Now, if I could, hear me out, I would have an example of every L85 in my collection. Something about bullpups just fascinates me. Couple that with being a gas blowback, and I'm extra happy. I remember when Jarek4 made this video about this WE, and I instantly wanted it. It's another replica of an interesting firearm, and it's a bullpup. Simple as that. Oh, and all hail full travel bolts. Number 15. Now we're only at number 15, but I'm gonna drop one of the most wanted airsoft replicas on the list. You're still looking amazing. Every collection needs a WA-2000, even if you don't like it. And to go along with it, I want a- Number 16. Ares DSR-1. Only problem. There's only one WA-2000, and it's a Springer from Ares. Now, let's be real here. Ares makes some absolutely beautiful replicas. A lot of people will give them that, but if you want to do all your own internal mods, not so much. Here are some harsh truths. The WA-2000 is beautiful, but I wouldn't want to play with the Ares version, nor would I ever want to play with the Ares DSR-1. I love it, but the bags can go for about $100 each sometimes, and some parts are very brittle, so I'd probably only have one as a showpiece. Then for number 17, I need an Ares scoped Car 98K. I hear that piece is actually really worth skirmishing and modding, but then again I haven't had my hands on one yet. Again, it's another beautiful replica, but going back to the Ares WA-2000, I would actually try to get two of those, and there's a reason. You see, if I had two, then I would leave one completely alone, maybe put it up on the wall or on a coffee table or something, and then I would actually contact a legendary builder called Bingo Customs, or contact Amped Airsoft, so I can convert one to use M14 magazines and run it on HPA. I would spam that setup nonstop for months. Then while I'm at it, the 18th spot goes to the WA-2000's H&K sister. Say what you will about VFC gas blowbacks, but I want their PSG-1 and partner that up with their new FAL. These are the two gas blowbacks that even VFC haters have a deep sigh about and think, okay, I would like one of those. My reasons for wanting something are kind of clear now. It's got to be a lesser replicate piece, and if it's full steel and gas blowback, it's probably on my list. But you'll see in a bit that revolvers and some AEGs get some love for me as well. Both the FAL and the PSG-1 sell for about $700. Kind of surprisingly, I thought the PSG-1 would be more expensive. But each one is still a small investment, especially once you stack on a bunch of magazines in your cart. Gas blowback ownership isn't cheap. But take either of these to a field and people are gonna want to check out your gear and ask a bunch of questions. And at the end of the day, Airsoft is just a really, really expensive fashion show. I have a Tokyo Marui PSG-1, but compare this... ...to this. 
All right, let's get a lightning round going. Number 20, the S&T Spectre RDP. I only accept one with the stock. These are usually really cheap, but once they sold out here in the United States, they really disappear along with their magazines. Number 21, the VFC 416D. One of the best selling airsoft replicas, period. And I'm talking about the first generation model, the version that the original Polar Star Fusion engine was made for. I don't know why, but I can't find a bone stock first gen 416D now. They've become the Honda Civics of airsoft. Everyone has done something to them. Number 22, King Arms M79 Bluber or Thumper. Probably the most lovely launcher that we have on earth. I've always loved these and I've had a couple of opportunities to get one, but something would come up. I don't need to explain anything here. It's just so pleasing to look at, let alone bloop with. Number 23, the G&G C7A1. The Canadian service rifle indeed has an airsoft replica and I indeed want one in green. This is another one of those pieces that I was just too lazy to get when I had the chance, but I think I can still find one as I do work with GNG quite a bit. The C7A1 AEG will probably fly under the radar at most fields as it does look like another M4, but for the people that know what it is, they'll appreciate it. Number 24, VFC M27 Limited Edition. I subscribe to the idea that level cap gaming made this popular. I already have a Polar Start M27, but it's not the exclusive super special tan model. It's really stupid that this matters to me, but it's really grown on me, like a fungus. Only 500 of these were ever made, but for $550, you got a hard case along with it, so realistically, it was a good deal. I just hope that I don't have to end up collecting all the limited edition VFC h and M4s. I already have the 417-350C, so at least that's a start. Number 25, the GMP Stoner 63. F***ing stoners. I would say that this GMP is one of the greatest stock models we've ever had. GMP is another company tech seem to have some strong opinions about when it comes to the gearbox designs, but this gets universal praise. I mean, have you ever even heard one shoot? These just vomit BBs with a good LiPo battery, but they're still light enough to go all out with. Even though I'd rather have the rifle version of the Stoner 63, this model will probably stay on my list of the greatest replicas that have ever been made. So that's half of my list so far. I still have a bunch of good stuff to make me realize I have a problem with hoarding, but I have a collection video coming up soon. But for now, let's get into the 26th spot with some big boys. Number 26, Echo One M240 Bravo. In my opinion, I think the support platforms with big lunchbox size magazines are awesome. I know an M249 can do what a PKM or an M240 can do, but lighter and easier, but I'll still take this over any normal saw, ever. Now I did once have a chance to get an older Echo 1 with Ohio Ordnance trademarks, but my friend backed out at the last minute since he grew some love for it again. One day I'll snag one up and put it right next to my PKM, and maybe I'll even HPA it and turn it into a real menace on the field. Maybe I'll give it 25 rounds per second or higher. I am a bad man. Number 27, EMG M1919. Here's another heavyweight that I would definitely HPA if given the chance. You're not even supposed to just walk around with an M1919, but I think I'll pretend I'm in world at war, if I please. I remember when Shoguns made their one-off Terminator 3 side grip model, and that would be my all-time favorite 1919 to get, but these EMGs are easier to get a hold of, so that's the one I'll go with. Swamp Sniper even let me mess around with his ones. Number 28, Snowwolf M99 Barrett. Hey guys, Jarek here, and today we're going to be looking at the Snowwolf Barrett M99 50 cal sniper rifle. Damn you, Jarek 4. You made me want this thing. 
and it's just an oversized L96. The Snow Wolf M99 is basically this, but in a heavy, bulky body kit. And that's it. I used to see these for about $200 years ago, but I can't find a single one in good condition now. These were not well taken care of. It's a Snow Wolf. No one pampers these, and I'm not looking at picking up someone else's project. I know I bring up cars and analogies that no one seems to understand, but some of the replicas on my list are like 240SXs. People bought them, made a bunch of irreversible mods to them, or they smashed them at every Milsim event that they went to, or maybe they stripped them for parts. And I am not interested in anything like that. I'm not giving you $180 for a $200 replica that looks like you dug it out of a crater in Afghanistan. Number 29, SEMA SVU. I'm not trying to be brief with everything on this list, but this is simple. It's a SEMA. It's different, and it was in Black Ops 2. Arguably one of the greatest Call of Duties ever made. The Unlock version is cool, but I think I'll go with the original model with a PSO scope. Number 30, Ares SL8. Yep, it's another replica that I've never even seen before. The SL8 is basically a really in hinder G36. No real handguard, no way to attach anything to the muzzle from what I can see, and way too big for its own good. That's not all too different from a lot of the stuff that I have in my collection so far, so I can work with that. I just hope that it'll be easy to upgrade. The SL9 looks good, but the 8 is a little more space age looking in my opinion. And I know I'm going to get grilled in the comments for even listing any Ares products, but I really don't give a shit. Number 31, the SRC XM8. The only SRC on my list because I'm not really into them, but they're the only ones making the XM8 and that's admirable. Now shocker, I want mine in gray because I'm very original and I'll be connecting most of my G36 magazines together like God intended. I'm getting more into G36s of all kinds, so the XM8 just comes naturally. And yet it's another thing every airsofter needs in their collection, even if it's against their will. Number 32, Tanaka M500 10.5 inch performance center in chrome. Now it is sidearm time, and I'm already talking about something I technically have. You see this comically oversized plastic $450 revolver? Yeah, I want one in chrome because of this old anime that no one cares about. These have some terrible performance in comparison to what we all use nowadays, but when names like Tanaka, Shoei, Top, and such are brought up in conversation, Odds are that no one's actually playing with them unless they're purely to just goof off. I still haven't shown off this ridiculous thing much, but I'll give it a proper rundown when I make my new collection video soon. Number 33, Marushin Mateba. Why can't I just be normal? I wish that I could tell you that I wanted four different high kappas and that that's all I need, but nope. I'm here wanting weird revolvers that no one makes parts for anymore. If I get one of these, I might just have to use it in CQB to flex on people. That's before I get rolled on by four speed softers all at once. But if I end up getting one hit with this really weird looking all plastic Japanese revolver, I'll be fulfilled. Number 34, KWA M93R. I'm going to need some wood grips, a folding stock, and an EOTech because I want one of these purely because of Modern Warfare 2. I've heard that these tend to break their three round burst functions over time, but I'll just try to enjoy it until that happens. I had to have watched this one video like a dozen times just to see if what I want to do is even possible. It's just going to be a really crazy setup all the way through. Number 35, Tokyo Marui. Single Action Army. I need a few of these. Either Tokyo Marui models or some custom Elite Force smoke wagons mixed with Gambler extended hammers. Again, this is just for bonus points. They're impractical, but very stylish. And if I take the time to watch a few videos, I'll start learning some tricks. Hey everyone, real quick, make sure you follow our new Instagram page. 
We had our last account banned because apparently airsoft replicas are regulated goods to some nerd at Instagram. But if we can make this new account explode, then that would really help out with future stuff that we have planned for the channel. I'll even set up a new giveaway if we can break 10,000 followers. So let's make that happen. But until then, number 36, 37, and number 38, Tokyo Marui AA12, KSG, and Sega 12. With exception of the Spass 12, which I already have, these are the holy trilogy from Marui in my eyes. The AA12 can be an overpowered beast that gets banned at a lot of different fields and arenas, but whenever they go up on sale, they pretty much just disappear. Personally, I think the magazines that come with the SGR-12 look better, but all of them are cool. I just hope that we see some more automatic electric shotgun stuff, or more shoddies in general, like the USAS-12. As for the Marui KSG-12, well, it's a gas pump action that really sounds great when you rack it. I just love airsoft shotguns, I really do. And I hear when people HPA tap these, that they become 100 times more reliable. I don't like just HPA tapping stuff just to do it. I only do it whenever it makes sense, like with suppressive fire stuff, like the M240 Bravo, or with a gas replica with refillable gas tanks that are known for being kind of terrible. But good thing I don't have to deal with this KSG taking off my thumb if I rack the pump wrong. Oh, and the Sega 12K that Marui is coming out with soon is a must. It's a gas blowback shoddy that doesn't spit out shells. Sign me all the way up. I don't pre-order many things, but this is something I would most definitely pre-order. It's been delayed for feeding issues I've heard, so I'm just here waiting for further news. I think it'll sell for about $700 like a lot of other things on my list, so that's gonna hurt a bit, but where else am I gonna find an Airsoft Sega 12K? I wonder if they'll ever make drum magazines for it. All right. How about some more SMGs and SBRs? Starting with number 39, KWA MP9. Legendary, absolute legend that still sells out. The KWA MP9 has been around for years and everything you can imagine has been done to them. I brought them up earlier, but I think What Are You Buying were the first ones who introduced me to the rate of fire that this thing can dish out. If any of you guys are thinking KWA MP7 or MP9, MP9 all the way. If you want a good gas well like weapon and you're looking to have some fun out there and just like just wreck the shit out of people. You either picked an MP7 or an MP9, and the MP7 was obviously more popular, but I would gravitate to the BNT over the H and K all the time. Maybe you can blame Call of Duty again, but I don't know. I just can't get over MP9 magazine dumps. Number 40, KWA QRF Mod 1 Special Edition. In my opinion, this is the coolest looking limited edition or special edition replica ever released. I just wish the white lines were glow in the dark. That would have made it a hundred times better to me. This was KWA's attention grabber as they released several PCC style replicas to the market, along with some great Ronin M4s. Now there are some KWA representatives that know that I want one of these. I'm just waiting for them to call me back. These were equipped with a Gate Titan MOSFET and an adjustable mainspring to give you 15 feet per second of wiggle room that actually helped a lot of players out, including me as that feature was added to pretty much every Ronin that they made afterwards as long as it had a version 2.5 gearbox. There was just a lot of good stuff going on in these. And when they went up on sale, all 50 sold out everywhere in three days after they released on December 14th, 2019. And no one cared about the $700 price tag. There's too many self-indulgent wieners in this city with too much bloody money. I'm telling you now, if I end up having some special edition ever made and I have say on how it looks, I'll be trying to pick between all chrome, that one cyborg camo from Black Ops 2, or a Ferrari color scheme. Either way, whatever I pick, I just hope that it can be put on the same level as how good looking this thing came. Number 41. It's your boy, the Galil. You have me f***ed up if you didn't think that I'd list any Galils on the list. 
So here's the King Arms Galil MAR. Yet another replica I can get very easily, but I've been way too lazy to order one. The magazines aren't even difficult to get. Nothing about this stubby Galil is difficult to find or work with. And I'd probably do a few creative things to this one. Because I'm too much of a wimp to do anything to my sexy ICS Galils that I have right now. I'm only shocked that these have been around for so long and are so easy to come by even now. So good on you, King Arms. Now just go ahead and make some new FALs. Number 42, PTS PDRC. Such a great piece. Always love this quirky little PDW ever since I saw it. These make for great HPA bases for the players that love to rush with low weight setups. It's a really tiny but accurate bullpup M4 with a really futuristic design. I know it's not going to appeal to everyone, it's too weird for that, but it could be worse. It could be the Number 43, Real Sword, Type 97. Oh god, this is terrible. Uh, these things have terrible iron sights, the ergonomics of a lubed up brick, but the performance that would shit on a lot of other modern airsoft replicas. And you know why? Because it's a freaking real sword. I've never been able to do this company justice even though I have the Type 97B that is even more rare than the standard variant. But soon I'll scoop one up, then I'll have an ugly couple of real swords that people will confuse for FAMAS every time I bring them out to a field. Number 44 WE Tech Mark 17 I asked all over the place who makes the best SCAR and the majority of people said WE and I was shocked. It was either get an NGRS from Tokyo Marui or get a gas blowback from WE. That's all you need apparently. I shouldn't have gone so long without a SCAR in my collection but I never really gave the SCAR a chance. I love 762 or 308 stuff so you would think that a Mark 17 would be on the top of my list of replicas, but no. Sorry, I was just busy with FALs, G3s, and M14s. I really want to get into more gas blowback stuff, and I'm sure when I finally get one of these and a bunch of magazines, I'll then reflect on the money pit that I've dug myself into. But at least I can cry over some satisfying gas blowback hits. Number 45, Orange War Game Striker 12. This is one of the most elusive things on this list, probably since it's not exactly an airsoft replica to begin with. This is actually a gel blaster that just happens to fit some shells from PPS, Tanaka, and a few other brands with some modifications. For sure, the Striker 12 is one of the most inconvenient things to run on this list, but oh come on, it's a Striker 12, that's all I have to say. Right next to the G11 and the AN94, the Striker 12 has to be one of the most requested things to be replicated in the game. I made a video with Ross Radford's Striker 12 from Explosive Enterprises, and I recommend that you go check out that video, which YouTube demonetized since it was considered to be promoting illegal weapon modifications. In YouTube, making stuff up as they please. The only thing I really hate, really, is that they never exactly explain anything or give timestamps. If YouTube gave timestamps as to when we did something wrong so we could never make that mistake again, that would change everything. Oh, shut up about YouTube demonetization. No, f you. Do you realize that when we get hit with the yellow dollar signs, that the video is held back from subscribers or from growing the new audiences? What the f are you talking about, man? <sighs> what are we talking about again? Honorable mention. Tokyo Brewery Mark 17 NGRS. Yep, I have to have both of the great scars. And I always hear great things about the NGRSs, so this is one that I would definitely want. GNG SIG 550. This is my all time favorite SIG rifle. And if that doesn't phase you, then maybe you remember the 550 as SIG from Apate. I really hope you don't remember the 550 from that. But apparently this show is more popular than I thought. ASG Scorpion Evo 3A1. Sad to say that I didn't know that this thing even existed until Black Ops 2. It wasn't in any of my books and I wasn't too deep into the industry all those years ago. But this ASG became one of the most respected AEGs ever made very quickly. I always thought that it was really cool for all the CZ fans out there. 
You can bet I'm gonna make some Call of Duty setups if I ever get one of these. PTS Gasbolak Masada ACR. Damn you, Modern Warfare. VFC Sig MCX. Don't care about all the hate these get. I still want one, and I'll deal with all the side effects later. I've owned a lot worse. Crytac Limited Edition Trident LMG. I think this was Crytac's big break, and their standard LMG is still very popular here in the United States, and they do a great job. This is one of those cases of... This is brilliant, but I like this. I just think that this model looks better. I wonder if the tan models will ever come out though. GNG Armament F2000. The final bullpup on this enormous list. I want one of these in black, with that big dumb sight on top. Not sure if I'd want a Tavora with a Mars sight to go along with it, but I absolutely need an F2000. That's not my old JLS. And then finally, after recording for about two hours, we're finally at my top five most wanted airsoft replicas. I think I have a pretty diverse selection so far. It could use some more classic stuff, definitely more sidearms, but this list is for me. You can make your own list in the comments. And I would actually really would like to see that. I think it would be really cool to see what everyone else would want if they had unlimited resources, even if it was just a bunch of daydreaming. However, let's get into the last five. Number 46, Viper Tech M16A2. Welcome to the Cream de la Creme. If you want a gas blowback and you want to be Mr. Deep Pockets, well, Viper Tech is the company for you. This company can seem overhyped to hell and back to some people and the essential one all beats all to others. The M16A2 hardly gets love from the industry, and I'm tired of trying to force A1s to look like A2s. They're definitely not the types of replicas for the faint-hearted. Because we're talking about, you know, spending $1,500 for an Airsoft M16. To be real with you, the only people I know who actually own these things are people with 200k plus yearly incomes. But if I end up with one of these, I better see some people checking in on me and asking if I have a Colt SP-1 already, because my priorities might be mixed up. Number 47, Classic Army M134 Minigun. Speaking of mixed up priorities, how about something worth more than my car? I have a bunch of friends that somehow got M134s, either from mystery boxes or from friends who didn't care about getting anything more than a couple hundred bucks. I know someone that doesn't even want his, but doesn't want to sell it. I don't care if it's 40 pounds and empties HPA tanks in minutes. Nothing comes even close to freaking people out like an M134. If given the option, I get an earlier Piper model that the Classic Army is based on because the looks of the feed shoot just looks awesome. Any way you spin it, I would take one of these out to pretty much any event I can drive to because a lot of people want to hold one and a lot of people want to take photos with one. Who needs accuracy, range, cost effectiveness, or a straight back? Number 48, G&G 22 karat gold AKM. Only 500 of these gold AKMs were ever approved of by G&G Armaments founder, James Lau. And for someone as gaudy as me, this is a must. I'm also Mexican, so it's almost a requirement. I know LCT made some stainless steel AKMs, but gold is the way to go. Put this thing on one of those fancy spinning platforms in a glass case, maybe get some whiskey glasses out while you're at it, in your high-rise apartment. I'd only expect to keep something like this at home as a showpiece, but I have a lot of other good-looking AKs that I can take out to any game already. I just hope that we get more gold replicas in the future that are as good looking as this old G&G. &G. Because, to be real with you, most times a company does something in gold, it just looks really ugly because it just looks like yellow. Number 49, G&G, &G, GMG42. I want this more than a minigun. I got into Airsoft because of World War II reenactments, and I always thought that the older MG42 that we got years ago 
fell apart too easily. So an all steel robust model was of course gonna make it high up on this list. A list that wasn't in any real order to begin with, but of course I saved my top five for last. The GMG 42, as G&G calls it, is their most expensive replica to date at about $1,700. But I've never heard of any owner regret their purchase. I've handled a couple of these before and I've taken all the notes that I need so I know what to expect if I ever get one. I just hope that I won't break my back apart since it weighs about 30 or 40 pounds. My friends at G&G know that I want one so all I have to do is wait for a couple to become available on the market. I've got some plans. You'll see what I'm talking about soon if you're a subscriber. Then finally at number 50. It's one last AEG on a list with gas blowbacks and a couple of springers. It's something that King Arms representatives even told me was never produced by King Arms until I sent them screenshots. This is the King Arms Duel ARM with black furniture. Wow, what a stupidly specific thing to name, right? So very few photos of this Galil exist and the videos that have existed slowly seem to disappear. I can find all the King Arms Galils besides this one on most sites. I need to complete my collection, but this is the single thing that's stopping me. And I know I can just get a real handguard, but it's just not the same. I love mixing and matching parts with my Galils, especially with my real one, but it's all about completing a set. I know this is not a product of the Mandela effect. King Arms really made this black furniture equipped model and one day I'll be able to really prove it when I eventually add it to my collection. And if someone could just make a gas blowback Galil series, then that would be great. Now for something that I've wanted to do ever since I first wrote up my list. I searched for about an hour online and added up all the numbers to see what my list of 50 replicas would cost. I used all the prices from when they first sold so I didn't use any appreciated numbers or secondhand prices. And after putting down the calculator, I laughed at the relative total of $33,653. Do you know how many Andes I could clone with that kind of money? So that was my massive list of pretty much every airsoft replica that I want. All the stuff that I haven't been able to add to my collection yet, but I definitely intend to at some point. But let's be real here, my collection will never be finished since I just keep enjoying this crazy game. And that's a good thing. I'll never get bored, especially if a company starts doing some sci-fi replicas or just starts making up stuff like some of the futuristic Call of Duties did. Even if the games were mostly crap to people, the guns sure did look great, I'll admit. But apart from all that, I need to thank you all for watching this massive video. And I want to thank all of the new subscribers. Again, make a list of all the stuff that you wish you could add to your collection even if you don't have a collection yet. What would be something that you would want to begin airsofting with? I'd also like to thank SS Airsoft for their continued support for the US Airsoft channel, where you can either begin your collection or expand on it with the use of my coupon code anytime. I appreciate anyone who supports the people who support us. But until that next video drops from the city of Dallas, Texas, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. Oh, wait, I forgot about the Tanaka PM63. Too much bloody money. Never buy a weed tech. I was lying the whole time. Hey, everyone. So, um, I've been working on that video for probably the past two weeks, like nonstop. I got so like caught up with just that video and I didn't want to like stop editing it. I've been sleeping at the weirdest hours because of this video, but I think it all came together very nicely and hopefully you guys really enjoyed it. Um, hopefully my sleep schedule goes back to normal. However, I wanted to quickly thank all the new US Airsoft channel members and all the old ones that have been sticking around for so long. So if you would bear with me, I actually wanna thank every single person like individually. So here we go. 
uh, NB Blow You Up. Thank you very much for becoming a channel member. Upmost Chipmunk, Daniel Prim... Primish... Pr I'm sorry, Daniel. Uh, the Only Lava Z, Bobby Fortnite, Eduardo. Some Loser, Banger Airsoft, Mr. Mister or Mr. Meister, Joshua Landers, Little Reese's Cups, I really like that name, Mike K-Train, Keener, George Kong, Gremlin, Airsoft, and uh, New Jersey, Defuk, Saxon 2 Dread, Cooper, Vinson, we have Vernon Broadbeck, you can tell that I'm really, really tired, but I still have to do some stuff. Uh, Tyler Winslow, MDZ, Chungus Airsoft, Just a Guy, Flamingo, Daniel Lago, Hawkeye, 685, 3L, Jeff, Axel Productions, Ermsmo, or Umzo, Ermsmo, I'm sorry, 92, Adam, Adam McIntosh, McIntosh, Adam McIntosh, uh, Weasel, or Weasel, Carl, uh, Jack Sanders, Reckham X, Cutter Airsoft, Western Gilbert, Grizz, Airsoft Ben, Ventrex, 0011, Bounty, PNW Airsoft, Josh Brewer, Lenzerg, or Lys, uh, Lyserg, 6210, BTD, this is an interesting name, BTDBRY, and The Dog 10, I'm probably completely destroying that name. Dream Killer, Zorgi, Ice Thunder, and L, Ben Crossman, and Crow's Shadow, the Airsoft Chef, Ruben Calsteron, I'm sorry Ruben, Lucas Forney, who? Hankenstein, Get Wreck Gaming, Almster, Almster Kerr, Raul 2014, A Real Nick, M A D I, C7 Viper, thank you very much, uh, Kazarin, Tristan Art and Airsoft, Big Love, Faded Pilot Props, Eddie, Lone Wolf, Josh K, and our longest running US Airsoft channel member, Toby Zhang. Thank you all very much for being US Airsoft channel members. Anyone can join up for exclusive perks. I, I doubt many people are still watching at this point, but to every single person that is a US Airsoft channel member, thank you very, very much for all the support that you guys give. And yes, I will cut these really long fingernails. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this video. Hopefully you guys have a good morning and or night. It's like eight in the morning and I've been up for like 26 hours at this point. I should probably get some sleep. <laughs> I'll see y'all around next time.